let's talk a little bit about the electronic visa waiver. Uh, there are certain countries, certain citizens can get this electronic visa waiver for the UK. Uh, what countries are those and what has this visa waiver been made to do, basically? This, this one of the visas or the, one of the e-visas that's not very popular in the UK, it's not, it's not uh, all the... All the uh, it's uh, it's not very well known, but I, I can tell you it's um, it's similar to uh, e visas in other countries, but it's only for uh, four nationals, and all of them are, are are the Middle East. They are Kuwait citizens, Oman, Qatar, and United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. and you have to have to be a res you have to be a national. You have to be you have to hold the passport with the citizenship of these countries. Mm -hmm. You can be resident United Arab Emirates, and you can say, "I would like to use the electronic visa waiver." It's have an abbreviation with EVW, okay? And uh, you must pay thirty English pounds, sterling pound, for this, and uh, you must apply between three months and forty-eight hours before you travel. It allow you to visit the UK up to six months for tourism, business, study, or medical treatment. If you have any reasons, other reasons visiting the UK, you'll not be able to use this visa and you need to apply a visa at the UK embassy in your home country or country of residence. So right. what, what can I tell you that the first thing, you need to be a national or citizen of the four countries, which is Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, United Arab Emirates. You can be a resident in this country. You can be... Oman citizen, but live in France and use the visa. You don't have to live in one of the countries, but you have to be citizenship or national. You have to prove like a passport from this country. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. You can come to visit a business meeting, a, a medical uh, uh, meeting, but um, for up to six months. For anything else, you need to apply for a normal visa. And you have to apply uh, for this visa three months, um, maximum, uh, minimum up to 48 hours before coming to the UK, and it's valid only for one time. It's not multiply entry. You just go to the website, you press pay, and we will include these features in our platform because it's finding this kind of visas and eligibility is a little bit hassle. We will have the option after the MVP that you can say, I'm a citizen of United Arab Emirates, and I'm visiting the UK, you will have this option. You will have the uh, um, uh, ability to apply direct from our, uh, from Visca directly to the government website. And then you can fill the form, pay the 30 sterling pound and get the visa printed out and fly to the UK. This kind of information, it, it's not, uh, we can say available to everywhere. We will try to find the hidden um, uh, easy way of applying to different visas and make it as as popular as much as we can. Sure. I mean, people should be able to use any opportunities they have to, to get where they want to go. The one question I had about this is said that, and you mentioned it as well, uh, you can come there for business travel, but you can't work. This seems a, a bit contradictory. Say I'm from uh, United Arab Emirates and my company has an office in London what what qualifies as work if I come to a, a quarterly meeting it's a business travel thing or if I come and work from the office in London for three months and I'm going there every day is that working in the UK how, how do they look at that I mean, what I can tell you, this is one of the misunderstandings that happen not just in the UK, but many countries, that there is difference between traveling for work or actually travel to get to be employed by a company mm -hmm. in another country. Let's use the same example. Alex is a um, is, is citizen of United Arab Emirates, and he used the, uh, the electronic visa um, application to get into the UK and he have a business meeting. He can go to our uh, office in London and then we can meet together, okay? You can stay there, you can work. You, we will not say work actually, but you can stay in the office 
and do whatever you wish. There is no restrictions. But we will not be able to employ, employ, um, we will not be able to hire you as a part-time or full-time or even a freelancer. We're not able to treat you as a UK resident. Mm -hmm. That's that's the difference. In order for us or you to be employed by a UK company and work for the UK company, you need to go through one of the two things that we have discovered discussed earlier, which the company can sponsor you or you apply for a visa to come to look for work. So you can have a business meeting, you can have an interview even for a job in the UK, but you're not to um, uh, stay, you have to travel back to your home country and then apply for a different visa. You can do, you can attend business shows, you can, you can give, uh, you can give like, you, I mean, anything that related to business you can do, but you'll not be able to actually work as employee for a business. You'll not be able right. to hire you directly and you stay in the UK and you consider yourself UK resident. No, you'll not be able to do this. And that's the difference between a business meeting and work. The word work, you can actually do uh, one off work, but you, you will still be employed by your own country, not directly uh, employed by uh, the company itself. Yeah, I guess I get it. Um, how does it, where do uh, freelancers fall on that uh, spectrum then? How, how does that work? Say that Alex from, from United Arab Emirates is a freelance designer. He's got gigs with companies all over the world, uh, but he comes to the UK, meets with some new clients, Maybe he wants to meet them face to face and they bring him on as a freelancer. Is there anything there he should be worried about? Should he, how, how should he handle that relationship? I mean, he can actually use the visa to travel and meet them, mm -hmm. but they will not be able to pay him as a UK resident or UK, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a UK worker, we can say. I mean, the, the agreements have to be done between himself as a freelancer on, uh, on, um, at, the, at the resident of United Arab Emirates. And mm -hmm. then the payments have to go through the United Arab Emirates, not in the UK bank, even if he have a UK bank. If he violate his visa terms, that could lead to uh, serious problems if he would like to come back to the UK. Sounds complicated, but no, that's why we're making... We, we are yeah. healthy help. I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> you can say it's like, uh, that's we will try to make things much more simple when yeah. we have the platform up and running and we we will see a, a different sort of problems the word work is that you can actually visit and do business meetings but you're not able to work in this company as an employer as a resident in this country and this is different and this kind of differentiate is is not very well known and it could give a, a much problems and complicated for people who are just uh, crossing borders for different reasons. We try to make this as simple as it and give this knowledge back to, to the public, which is, which is not, uh, not very well known right now. For sure. And it sounds like that is one of, because of the way that our work relationships are changing in terms of globally, in terms of freelance, in terms of working for one co company in another country, these things get complicated quickly. And it seems like the visa system of each individual country is, is playing catch up to a certain extent and definitely is behind the trends of change in the work environment and the work relationship. So that's why visa is going to be very helpful for people who want to do these things and, and go work somewhere else.